Welcome to this video on slit lamp examination in which we are going to show you a posterior polar cataract. So let's look at what we are looking in this patient. So what you see is this is a red reflex or retroillumination of the lens with a beam aligned vertically and it's not oblique. And what you see is concentric rings of opacity. It looks like more of an onion ring, onion peel appearance or an appearance of bullseye appearance. And this is typically what you would see in a posterior polar cataract. It's a disease. If it's unilateral, it tends to be sporadic. But if it's bilateral, it is autosomal dominant. And the main problem which you get in this patient is as you have this opacity, the opacity is over here and the posterior capsule is deficient in this area in some patients or most of the patients depending on what is the grade of posterior polar cataract. And when you're doing surgery, typically when you're doing hydro dissection in this area, what will happen is this is an area of weakness and this is an area of nucleosclerosis and if it Usually when they develop into a white mature cataract, that is when the disaster happens. As you do hydrodissection or anything, there's a rent and the nucleus falls back immediately behind. But even if you don't have that, you can you need to do limited hydrodissection in these patients. And the other thing which you're seeing around it is actually an area of posterior subcapsular cataract which has developed over age in this patient. Let's go and see if it is a unilateral disease or a bilateral disease and how can you examine it. One is a retroillumination of the lens and you can do an oblique examination to actually see if it is associated with any posterior uh, subcapsular cataract which you are seeing or it is associated with any nucleosclerosis as well. But red reflex is actually which gives you a great uh, view of the this is the posterior subcapsular opacity which you're seeing around it and this is the the ring shaped or the onion peel or the bullseye appearance of a posterior polar cataract so let's go forward on this and the pupil was slightly mid dilated for examination you go and see on the other side as well and yes it was a familial autosomal dominant type of opacity and here you can again see a posterior polar cataract on the other side with less amount of posterior subcapsular opacity and here you're seeing with a slit beam I haven't sh not showing you the uh, very uh, angled beam appearance but here you can see there's probably minimum degree of nucleosclerosis NS1 plus in this patient and this is what you're seeing, this is the posterior part of the slit beam. This is the anterior part of the slit beam falling off the cornea. And this is the posterior part which is falling on the posterior capsule. And this is also highlighting that area of posterior polar cataract. So this patient had nucleosclerosis associated with posterior polar cataract and some degree of uh, posterior subcapsular opacity. So when you're going in, you need to plan your surgery. Uh, how you're going to do that? And the most important thing is to do a limited hydrodissection and uh, be prepared for any posterior capsular rent in this patient. So if you are going for a single piece IUL, it's probably better off to have a multi-piece IUL in hand as well. So if you get a posterior capsular rent, you can solve that and have a retractable machine ready before doing these kinds of surgeries. Thank you very much for watching.